Okay, as I said before, heat, the transfer of energy from a high temperature system to a low temperature system, when those two objects or systems are the same temperature, then we have a thermal equilibrium and heat ceases to exist. And I know this is going to be a concept that's going to be difficult for people to think, difficult for you in your experience to think of heat because you always think of heat being contained in something. But if you think about it, the heat that you're always thinking about is the heat that might be radiating from your body or the heat might be radiating from your car. It's always talking about two systems that are not in thermal equilibrium. Okay, but keep that in mind. Heat is the release or transfer of energy from a high temperature system to a low temperature system. Let me ask you a question. Does an ice cube have heat? Well, of course it does if it's in a surroundings where the temperature of the surroundings are less than the temperature of the ice cube. Okay, so that kind of should give you some way, some idea of how heat works. Now, if the ice cube is in a system or an environment where the temperature is higher, then heat's going to flow from the air into the ice cube. Okay, so heat's always moving from one system or object to the other, and when those two objects are at the same temperature, there's no heat anymore. Got that? That's confusing. <laughs> All right, a thermometer, of course, senses that heat. It senses that heat because it's exchanging energy with the surroundings. Remember, I gave you the example of a thermometer in a hot room. That heat is going into the thermometer and the mercury is rising. And the opposite thing happens in a cold room. Here's an example, uh, figure 7, 8 in the book. Higher temperature system. These molecules are moving faster. And in a, in a way, they're actually colliding with and exchanging energy with these molecules. So heat is flowing from this high energy system to the low energy system. When they're the exact same temperature, when they've reached thermal equilibrium, then we have no heat transfer and no heat. It simply no longer exists. It's the physicists that give us these definitions, so don't blame me. All right, sensible heat, which we talk about in relation to uh, specific heat, but sensible heat is heat that we can sense. It's the heat that you and I, when we touch something, we know that it's hot or we know that it's cold. It's something that when we put a thermometer in something, then we know that, that that's a way of sensing heat. So that's why it's called sensible heat, heat that we can detect. Okay, And that can be exchanged in two different ways. And those two ways are being in physical contact which is called conduction. So if I put my finger on a stove, heat is conducting from that stove top to my finger. All right. Or if I put my hand above the stove, then by convection, heat is causing the motions of the fluid. So as we, as we warm up the air that's in contact with that stove top, that air is rising and it's heating my hand. So that is convection, the fluid motions that are caused by heat or heating or cooling as well, hot air rising, cold air sinking, warm water being at the top of the ocean, cold water sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Those are examples of convection and convection is a really important process for understanding the motions of the ocean. Conduction is when you're actually touching or two systems are in contact. So when the air is in contact with the ocean, that very thin layer of air on the surface of the ocean is conducting heat one way or the other, depending on which system has a higher temperature. Okay, here's an example from the book, figure 710. Here we have conduction, heat moving along the metal coat hanger to your hand. And kids, make sure you don't hold the coat hanger up here, otherwise you'll burn yourself and your marshmallow. If you were to actually stick the marshmallow in the fire, it would start on fire, but you would have another example of conduction. Convection, as I just explained, the warm air rising, and so heat being transferred as a result of fluid motions, that's convection, and then the light that's coming off, and actually the light that's coming off can actually also bring heat with it, that's called radiation. We don't talk much 
uh, too much about radiation in terms of heat exchange um, and oceanographers generally talk mostly about convection and conduction of heat with regard to the ocean but for sake of completeness we want to talk about the heat that comes off just the electromagnetic energy that's being released here that also is heating up so and this is really important this radiation is really important for understanding the greenhouse effect 